Um, we visited 23 towns and 21 schools along the way. Um, this photograph was taken in Minterby, a remote mining town a short distance off the highway. This school top took the opportunity to have a fancy dress day with a whole day of activities 1908 style. And I'm very proud to tell you uh, that uh, Kim Holm, the museum's director, and I won the three-legged race. We three beat primary school students. <laughs> <laughs> They've not forgiven us for that. Um, we were, however, not quite so successful in the sack race. Um, and I have to say that we were doing mighty well in the wheelbarrow race. Uh, we were coming second. Kim was pretty damn determined we were going to come first. Pushed me a little bit too far. I went head over and it all just went to hell. But anyway, um, that, that the wheel certainly fell off. And I've st I reckon I've still got prickles in my hands, but anyway. Um, back to my script. Um, they even built their own mini Talbot in their tech studies class. I sent up photographs before the exhibition tour went there. Um, and they had a very enthusiastic tech studies teacher. We told this story to almost 2,000 school students along the way. Um, this photograph was taken in Tennant Creek at the Tennant Creek High School. Um, for legal reasons, we can't show photographs of any students smiling at me. You know, they've all got to be the backs of heads, so my apologies for that. Um, and we also had plenty of fun along the way. This is uh, Russ and Liz Driver. Um, they run Outback Vehicle Recovery. They are people who I would suggest if you are doing insane things like taking historic cars, or any cars really, through Central Australia. Um, remember the name Outback Vehicle Recovery. Russ and Liz were just the most wonderful people. They towed our exhibition trailer all the way from Adelaide to Darwin over 52 days, and then they towed it back for us. Um, Great sense of humour, great people. As you can see, Russ has fun lunch. <laughs> oh, I don't know, maybe that was a portrait of Kim. <laughs> the exhibition couldn't have been undertaken without support of our exhibition partners, and we'd like to pay tribute to Visions of Australia, the Federal Government's Exhibition Touring Scheme, Russ and Liz Driver from Outback Vehicle Recovery, RAA, MedSat Technologies and ReachNet, CNPA for our IT needs, Trek Trailers and ABC Local Radio. To put it another way, we're proud as punch to have the tablet in our collection at the National Motor Museums and we were delighted to be able to celebrate the centenary of this important event and share the wonderful story with so many people across the Australian continent. And that includes you people here tonight. So thank you so much for having me. We have time for just a few questions, if anyone has a question for Alison. I think you're prepared to answer. It depends what question is. <laughs> How do you make stuff up? Not too difficult. <laughs> Any questions? Did you ever start the car and actually work it? Or just yes, we did. Else? We actually drove the car three times. We drove it out of Adelaide, we drove it into Alice Springs and into Darwin. So, and we in fact did um, a couple of short runs in between too to make sure that everything was in working order for our media moments. Um, our rationale was that yes, we probably could have driven the Talbot all the way from Adelaide to Darwin, um, but if we had, we wouldn't have been able to take that trailer with all that interpretation. Um, so it would have just been people who come and look at the car, and that would have been terrific, but we think we gave them an added experience. Our other issue was the fact that it's got a top speed safely of around about 60 kilometres an hour. And through those roads on the Northern Territory with an open speed limit of 130 or whatever it is, we actually thought we were going to be a bit of a road menace. We thought there was a high risk to the car, but also to other dri drivers trying to overtake us. Um, and we didn't really want to come back and tell our chief executive that we'd broken it. <laughs> That's right. Any other questions for Alison? Sue, what, what's the reason, uh, like you said, the uh, legal thing where you can't show the faces of people? Uh, what, that it's what, privacy, that it's privacy laws. Um, <laughs> speaking from my experience at Fingers Medical Centre, I know we had to be very careful with showing any um, children um, in any of our marketing stuff, and it was because um, of issues like non-custodial parents mm -hmm. discovering where their children were and things like that. So we just have to be really careful. There were some schools that did have media release forms already signed and that was 
was much easier, but mostly I've got lots of bags of heads. <laughs> they weren't all rejecting it. <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> but given the fact that you're all still facing me now, I'm feeling good. <laughs> uh, what's the 474? That's actually its number plate, um, and that is the, the um, you know, the first one was known as Angelina, the second one known as 474. Um, a lot less romantic, but perhaps they thought they jinxed it on the first. But it first that wasn't the 474th in the South Yes, it probably was. Because Angelina's registration was 319, I think. Um, so this was just under 12 months later that they, they had the second vehicle in and registered. So. As a historian, what was the first one we ever had in South Australia? That's, I'll throw that open to the floor. <laughs> I know who the first driver's licence was issued to, um, and that was William Arthur Hargreaves in uh, 1906, but that's not an answer to your question. <laughs> Possibly. Um, the Shearer was certainly one of the very early cars built in, in yeah, South Australia. No, that's right. I mean, you know, we've also got the online jigger from 1902 up there, but... Yes? How many spare tyres did they carry on those? Um, uh, there were, I don't know if it showed up in one of the photographs, they had the four Stepney wheels um, strapped to the car, um, and I don't know that they carried any additional spares with them, so I think they just had the four, four Stepney wheels that they could attach. <coughs> but they did have spare tubes and things. Okay, time's getting on. Alison, thank you for sharing your experience tonight with us. It's a very great pleasure. I love doing it. <laughs> I was reminded, as I listened to Alison, of an old gentleman that I knew probably 38 years ago in my little town at Old Roo. And this old gentleman, and that's the only way I can describe him, moved in from the farm, he sold the farm, and he moved in and he retired in Aru. Retired too early, he became bored. And so he took on as a hobby restoring old furniture. And he was absolutely brilliant at it. The work that he did was something you had to see to believe. One day I was at his place and I was watching him restore a chest of drawers for the local doctor's wife. And I just commented to him, I said, Ray, you amaze me, the way in which you work and the work that you're doing, it's, it's an absolute credit to you. And he stopped for a moment and he just looked up and he said to me, my dear friend, and he always called me that, he said, my dear friend, nothing in this world has ever been achieved without a great deal of passion. And you brought back the memory of that lovely old fellow to me tonight. So, thank you for that on a personal level. But more particularly, on behalf of each and every one of us here tonight, thank you sincerely for sharing your passion with us. We've enjoyed your talk. It's been great, and I wish you all the best in the future. Thank you. Thank you.